Good morning. Uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee for the honorable um, invitation. I will um, speak about smoking prevalence in adolescents and health and social risks. And I'm talking about adolescents because um, we am the head of the Center of Adolescent Medicine and uh, we um, actually hold the UNESCO Chair on Adolescent Healthcare since uh, 2010. That's why I'm going to give you a brief introduction why tobacco control is actually one of the main uh, United Nations goals. Uh, in 2015, the United Nations adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Global Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals cover social and economic development issues, including poverty, hunger, health, education, climate change, gender equality, water, sanitation, energy, urbanization, environment, and social justice. And each goal has specific targets to be achieved over the next 15 years. These are the 17 sustainable development goals, and actually tobacco control uh, comes under uh, the third goal, uh, promotion of health and well-being for all. The well-being and, and meaningful participation of young people is fundamental to achieving the sustainable development goals. And um, we should mention that adolescents and young people uh, aged 10 to 24 years are almost, they're uh, just below 2 million, there are 1.8 8 billion, excuse me, and they constitute a quarter of the world's population, a larger cohort than ever before. Actually, although uh, the population of adolescents and young people is growing, the health of adolescents has improved far less than that of younger children over the past 50 years. In 1971, the concept of epidemiological transitions in public health was, was described as a shift from infectious to chronic dis conditions. So unhealthy behaviors combined with unhealthy environments to offset the improved health status achieved by controlling previously fatal infectious diseases. And there has been a rise in chronic disorders in young people over the past 20 years. Non-communicable diseases are the so-called chronic diseases, and they result from a combination of genetic, physiological, environmental, and behavioral factors. Actually, they kill 41 million people each year, which accounts for the 71% of all deaths globally. There are four main types, the cardiovascular diseases, including heart attacks and stroke, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, including chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma, and diabetes, and all these four types account for over 80% of all premature um, deaths from non-communicable non diseases. Modifiable behaviors, such as tobacco use, increase the risk of dying from a non communicable disease. Tobacco accounts for over 7.2 million deaths every year. So the most prominent non-communicable diseases, these four, are linked to common risk factors, namely tobacco use, harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy diet, and lack of physical activity, and all these risk factors have their origin in adolescence. Therefore, a focus on adolescence is crucial for achieving the health goal number three, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all and at all ages, and more specifically, by 2030, to reduce by one-third premature mortality from non-communicable diseases through prevention and treatment and promote mental health and well-being. And to conclude, Con to tobacco control is a global health goal because tobacco is the second leading cause of death worldwide and it's expected to cause at least 10 million deaths in 2020, which is twice that of 2005. And why should we focus on adolescents? Because tobacco use among young people has been now a pediatric 
epidemic, the vast majority of smokers begin tobacco products well before the age of 18. 17% of adolescents aged 13 to 15 use tobacco, and 11% use tobacco other than cigarettes. Almost one in four students, 13 to 15 years old, whoever smoked cigarettes, smoked their first cigarettes before the age of 10. And there is little difference between genders in cigarette smoking or in use of other tobacco products. Adolescence is a time of increased propensity to engage in health risk behaviors. Health risk behaviors, alcohol, tobacco, and illicit drug use, as well as sexual risk behaviors, tend to cluster, as we all know. They are established during adolescence, and they are often maintained into adulthood, affecting health and well-being in later life. Why adolescents initiating smoking? Why can they be so poor decision makers? Are they less intellectually mature? No. Actually, adolescents can make surprising decisions despite knowledge of risks, and they're affected by exciting or stressful situations where, when making these decisions, the so-called hot cognitions, especially in the presence of peers. Sensation seeking, which is the willingness to take risks to attain new, varied, and stimulating experiences is an important mediator for risk taking and increases between the ages of 10 to 15 years. And this can be explained by the developmental imbalance in the adolescent years because the adolescent brain is like a natural tinderbox. The gonadal hormones actively stimulate sexual drive, emotion, rewards, and risk taking. Yet, the brain systems that regulate and moderate these emotional and appetitive urges are not yet mature. And why this is happening? Because the prefrontal, the prefrontal cor cortex, which is the site of planning, emotional regulation, decision making, impulse control, and that forms the essence of rational thinking and checks high risk behavior, starts to develop early in life. However, it matures late in adolescence until the late 20s. Actually, the prefrontal cortex undergoes the, what we call synaptic pruning, which is the refinement of dendritic branching and synaptic connections in order to establish a proper excitatory inhibitory balance. And this is, as we said, a late maturational process which goes throughout adolescence. Through um, pruning, the basic pattern of peak synaptic density which is evident in early childhood, and its peak is around three years of age, is followed by a reduction of synaptic density throughout adolescence, and this might explain the steady improvement in self-control from childhood to adulthood. So why adolescents exhibit risky behaviors? Because the limbic system, which governs reward and pleasure seeking, develops earlier in adolescence than the prefrontal cortex that, as we said, matures in late 20s. And, there is a, and uh, therefore, there is a great disparity in the maturation between the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. On the other hand, uh, the nucleus accumbens, which is the brain's pleasure center and plays a role in sexual arousal and addiction, plays a role in the high, which is derived from certain recreational drugs, shows uh, increased activity uh, during uh, early to mid-adolescence. Therefore, adolescence is a period of enhanced vulnerability until the brain development is complete around the ages of 25 to 27 years of age. On the other hand, this, um, uh, this uh, not, not the, the, the problem with the maturation in the, in the adolescent brain um, is, um, causes another problem that um, the developing brain is particularly susceptible 
to the tobacco dependence. Tobacco, de tobacco dependence is not simply a bad habit, it is often a severe addiction and nicotine causes changes to brain structure and chemistry such that it is difficult to feel normal without it. The severity of nicotine withdrawal can vary from wanting a mild desire to smoke that is short-lived and easily ignored, to craving a stronger urge to smoke, more persistent and difficult to ignore, or needing an intense and urgent desire to smoke, unpleasant and unremitting. And to define some terms, tobacco product is any nicotine delivery product not approved for safe and effective tobacco dependence treatment. Secondhand smoke is a smoke emitted from a tobacco product that is inhaled by a non-user. Third-hand smoke is the tobacco smoke that is absorbed onto surfaces and exposes the non-user by either direct contact and dermal absorption and or of gassing and inhalation. Third-hand third smoke may react with oxidants and other compounds in the environment to yield secondary pollutants. Actually, alternative tobacco products use is now gaining popularity among young people and these products can be oral tobacco, chewing tobacco, the moist snuff also called deep, flavored cigars, pipes, nas, which is a, small, a moist tobacco product placed between the cheek and the gum, tobacco wrapped in a tender leaf, tobacco flavored with cloves, dissolved tobacco products, with appearance similar to breath mints or toothpicks. And we should mention that many adolescents use both cigarette and non-cigarette tobacco products. Electronic nicotine delivery systems are handheld devices that produce an aerosol from a solution typically containing nicotine, flavoring chemicals, and carrier solvents such as propylene glyco glycol and vegetable glycerin, glycerol for inhalation by the user. And they may have different names, electronic cigarettes, e-cigarettes, e-cigs, e-cigars, uh, vape pens, vaping devices, etc. There is currently no regulation on content or manufacturing standards for electronic nicotine delivery systems. Carcinogens, toxicants, metals, and silicates have been found in the emission of these devices. Some of the commonly used flavoring chemicals are known respiratory irritants, and these products are being aggressively marketed to youth, and flavorings, including candy and fruit flavors, increase the appeal to young people. We, most of us are aware of the health risks of tobacco. Smoking tobacco causes exposure to a lethal mixture of more than 7,000 toxic chemicals, including at least 70 known carcinogens that can damage nearly every organ system in the human body. A regular lifelong smoker loses at least 10 to 11 years of life to tobacco on average. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in the world. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is one of the leading causes of death in the world globally. 45% of all deaths from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are attributed to tobacco use. And death from heart disease and stroke, the two leading causes of death in the world, are heavily tied to tobacco use. In 2016, it was estimated that one-fifth of males and one-third of females globally were exposed to secondhand smoke, and secondhand smoke is caused, has caused an estimated of 884,000 deaths. Although secondhand smoke usually comes from cigarettes, smoking other tobacco products, such as a water pipe, substantially contributes to secondhand smoke exposure. Prevalence of exposure to secondhand smoke in bars and restaurants is relatively low in several European Union member states, less than 10%, but, but is far higher in some other countries, like Greece, where it is nearly 8, 80% uh, in 2017. Tobacco smoke exposure in utero causes long-lasting neurocognitive, behavioral, and respiratory harms and it's closely associated with sudden infant death syndrome in the newborn babies. There is no safe level of tobacco smoke exposure. 
Secondhand smoke is an independent risk factor for neurobehavioral disorders, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, disorder, learning disabilities, and contact disorders in adolescents. And it is associated with decreased glomerular filtration rate and preclinical atherosclerosis in adolescents. And to conclude, adolescents is, a, is often perceived as the healthiest stage of life and many consequences of risky behaviors and, and unhealthy lifestyles in adolescence will only be seen later on. Teenagers become dependent on nicotine far earlier than previously believed. Non-cigarette tobacco products represent emerging threats to adolescent health. We should not recommend electronic nicotine delivery systems for tobacco dependence treatment as they have not been shown to be safe or effective for tobacco dependence treatment. Adolescence is the best moment to target behavioral preventative efforts instead. Adolescents have the least access to health information and services, and we need to be doing more to ensure that young people are equipped to be on healthy pathways throughout adulthood as adolescence sets the trajectory for life and future health. Thank you very much.